Okay, just showing you the graphic from its location from the paper and then going right into Illustrator. This is the uh, path, so I'm just going to double click on it, scan layers, the title, and dim it down, get a new layer, and just type in graphics up right on top of this. And just zoom into it, find the rulers, Command R, and just go ahead and locate approximating the center of this section. It doesn't look like it's the perfect center, but it'll get us something to start with. Here's the elliptical tool. Option is going to set it from the center. Shift key is going to come out. So it's a little off a little bit. I'm going to make it that distance to it. So you can see the stroke and the fill. I'm going to take the fill off just so I have the stroke. Increase it just a little bit. And when you take a look at the uh, gradient and the uh, piece itself, when you come across, this is the gradient is going to give you a, a gradient going across the inside. When I flip it to the outside, it'll give you that option to uh, maybe put it across the piece here. So zoom in just a little bit. Here's our oops, linear. So here's the part that's letting it go across this section. So once you have this part, you can come into your palette, go into the bottom to get the gradients and metal shows up. This is the one that's down here. So you can pick one that has a, a number of pieces going across and then just take the outside one and choose uh, black to get at that edge. Um, gives you that section to it. So when you look at it a little bit closer, it has the edge to it. The second uh, <laughs> circle again, I'm just going to option if it'll let me place it on there. <laughs> That's going on the outside edge. I can take the uh, fill and stroke and just switch them. Uh, but if I want to just grab the eyedrop tool, I can grab the color that's listed inside of here. Under the effects, you have the uh, rasterized stylized. You have these different pieces, but you have inner and outer glow. Inner Glow will let you bring up this part. Here's a color choice to get the color to choose from on the color picker. Here's the opacity and the size of the blur, whether it's on the edge or the center. So you can see it has this glow going across it. So right now I have these two items. I'm just going to hide them under Object Hide. And now concentrate on the uh, text. So I'm going to click and type out 12. Highlight the text. Make sure the character palette is open window type and character and just take a look regular I'm just going to click on the sub menu to go to bold and you can see the point size okay go to paragraph just make sure that it's centered and the tracking is the space between the lines so I'm just going to place it there and you could rotate this but it's just easier to um, option and click over to this side. I'm going to take the text tool and just make it the number one so I get a better spacing coming across. And just position these and the smart guides will help you line them up with the preceding ones, top or bottom or the baseline. You can see it. Pretty close. When I get to this one, I'll just click on T for text tool and put the 10 in there. Okay, text tool. So now I have all the numbers. The second part is trying to locate this central section for the tiles. I'll put that in there. Select off, take the pen tool, and just make three clicks here. Keep it connected already on the section, so just give it to a red. Select it, click off and select it to get the rotation and the reflect tool. Option, click right on the section there. The copy's already there. And just select and use the pathfinder to unite it. Come back to the rotation tool and just option and click. 
and you'll see it's at minus 30. To get there, you just put 360 divided by 12. Get preview, and it goes to the positive on the opposite side. Just put a minus in front of it. And it'll copy it across. Command D makes a third copy. And just take inside the, the color choices that you have. And you can pick a lighter segment of the red. with transparency <laughs> for that one and then just bring these command shift plus to the top the part that has this section as a corner <laughs> just take the pen tool go ahead and we'll go past this and that gives you the shape take a circle Tool, ellipse tool, option, and shift key, and just come to about that distance. Give this a color so you can see it. And select these two items. And with the intersection select, it'll give you this piece here. You can take the gradient if you want it to go out in that direction. Or if you just want to make it a solid, solid piece. And just command lower bracket to put it behind the numbers and stuff. There we go. And the last part is this part of the circle for the arrow. So the option kind of make that arrow right there. Just reset this. Take the fill off. And you can see the thickness of the stroke. You can make that up there. Go and take the scissors out of the eraser tool. Go ahead, whoops, make sure you get the scissors. Got the eraser. Click off and delete that part. And select this. And in the stroke palette itself, you'll see that you can select the arrowhead. And depending on which part you choose, depending on which one. And here's the part that has the size of it as well as if it's going to be on the end of it here. And there you go. And when you s submit it, you can take, come down here, take the text, highlight <laughs> that, take this to zero, make this bold, which it is. Take the center it to there. Take a rectangle selection. Swap it out. Give it a little thickness to it. Hide the background layer. Where do I let's see? Do I have that part? <laughs> I'm not sure. All. There we go. Have it. And then when you're ready, just select all of these parts. The file export selection. And that'll give you this item's location of the folder. The prefix, take off anything extra and export it. You should be okay.